Hello parents and welcome to our first ever Mount Airy Elementary School 5th grade math virtual workshop. Uh, my name is Mr. Sandridge and I'm going to uh, be the one to show you our first um, video. This one's called, uh, we're going to be teaching you how to do an area model with division or partial arrays. Um, looks a little difficult, but I'm hoping that what you see once we get started is it actually doesn't look very different than the way that you might think about long division uh, in your head. So let's get started. Uh, up at the top here in pink, we have a math problem. It's 3,648 divided by 8. Now, the first thing that your students are going to do is they're going to start to break this number 3,648 into expanded form. Now, this should be really familiar to them since they've been doing it uh, all the way since back in second and third grade. Uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to take this 3 and know that it's not a 3. It's actually the number 3,000. And they're going to use that number and they're going to write it in this box. That takes care of the 3. They're going to take the 6 and they're going to know that that's not a 6, that's actually the number 600. That 4 is actually a 40. And the 8 is 8 ones. Uh, and we're going to be dividing this all by 8 and I'm going to put my divisor out on the edge. So now that we're at this point, this is kind of the second step, really. Um, what your children are going to do is they're going to use something that we learned in math last week. And they're going to think to themselves about the properties of division and multiplication. They're going to look at the 3,000 there. And they're going to look at the 8. And they're going to think to themselves, well, is there a way I can pull a basic fact out of this larger number 3,000 and with the 8? So hopefully, your children, and because they've had the practice, they should be able to see that... They can break this 3,000 down into a 30 and an 8. And at that point, maybe they think to themselves, okay, I need to find myself a division fact that will be close to, um, close to like 30 divided by 8. Some of your children might think, oh, 32 divided by 8 equals 4. But that's not going to work for us right now. We need to make sure that we go underneath of this number right here, that 3,000. So... What can we multiply 8 by to get close to 30 but not above? <clears throat> so a number here that would work would be 3. So I'm going to write my 3 up here at the top. And 3 times 8 is 24, and there's my 24. I also have these two zeros, so I'm going to bring those down. And we worked with this last week as well. So that 3, because I still have those two zeros left, I have 300. And so 8 times 300 is going to give me 2,400. What I have to do now is going to be really familiar, especially if you're a long division fan. I'm going to take 3,000 and I'm going to subtract that 2,400. And I'm going to be left with a difference of 600. Our next step is to address the hundreds place, and currently we have 600 in there. I also have 600 left over from when I was uh, addressing the thousands place in our original, um, our original dividend. So I have to account for that, and I need to add it to my hundreds place. So I'm going to take my pen, and I'm going to put 600 over here, and I need to add them together, which is going to give me 1,200. Now, just like what we did in the thousands place, I have to do the same to the hundreds place. I'm going to take this 1,200. I'm going to see how many eights can I pull out of it. Hopefully your child knows that in this problem, they can look at it as a 12 and an 8. And how many eights are going to be pulled out of that 12? Well, in this case, it's 1. So I'm going to write 8 there. There's my 1. I have two zeros left, which are going to be reflected right up there in my partial quotient. Um, and I'm going to go a little outside the box here, but my difference in this one is, is 400. 
at the end of this problem, I'm going to end up adding up all of these partial quotients. That's why they're called partial quotients, because when we put all the parts together, we'll get the whole answer. Um, so next, we're going to move on to the tens place. My next step is to look at the tens place, and currently right now I have 40 in my tens place. I have to make sure that I'm accounting somewhat for this 400, so I'm going to add it to my tens place. It's going to give me a sum of 440. Now, just like the places before, the kids have to realize how many eights are going to be pulled out of uh, 440. They should be able to see that basic fact of 44 and 8 and think to themselves how many 8's can I pull out of 44 without going over. They should understand that 8 times 5 is going to give them 40. So there's my 5 up here. I'm going to write the 40 and I have one zero left over. I can just bring that down, add it up there to our partial quotients and what I'll have left is just 40. So our last step is to look at the ones place. I have eight ones, but I also have 40 left over from the tens place. So what I need to do is I need to add that 40 to my eight ones, and that's going to give me 48 ones. I need to look back and check with my divisor, eight, 48, the student should be able to see a basic fact there that eight times six is going to give them 48. So I guess the up would make more sense to put the 6 up here because 6 times 8 is 48. Here is 48. I have nothing left over. So now this is the time where the students are able to add up those partial quotients and when those partial quotients actually mean something. So look up here at the top. I've actually set up my, for myself an addition sentence. 300 plus 100 plus 50 plus 6. Now when you add all those up, that's going to give you 400. 56. Now, if you, at the very beginning of this video, you were doing long division the way that you were taught, you probably got up here in our original problem that the answer is 456. So what we're teaching students to do is to really understand place value. This is going to encourage some algebraic thinking. It's going to encourage some deep understanding of division. It's going to help them once they do finally get to the division algorithm in sixth grade, they're going to be able to do it much more fluently and understand really why they're doing it. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll send you another video soon. Thanks.